Now let's do the <coughs> Dvar Malchut. Here we go. Oh, here it is, here it is. Why, why, why does this happen? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, here we go. No. <clears throat> there we go. All right. We're learning now, uh, we're continuing the speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave in 1991 and this week's Torah portion. And the Rebbe brings out that it's hinting at <clears throat> the work that we have to do in this world to fight a battle and the reward that we're going to get for it. And that is the future redemption. And that's hinted at by the Torah portion that we read in the daytime as Parshish Kitetse, when you go out to war. And the Torah portion that we read in the afternoon, the small Torah portion that we read in the afternoon, which is next week's Torah portion, which is called Kitavo when you come to the land. <clears throat> so they're both together. So the Rebbe, if you remember, just a short resume, the Rebbe said <clears throat> that <clears throat> we're fighting a battle. That's the reason we're in this world, is to fight a battle against ourselves, against the... <clears throat> ignorance and the darkness of the world and we're going to get a reward we get paid and the payment is the future redemption so says the Rebbe we got two opposites over here it doesn't make any sense who gets paid for doing, doing a job a worker, a worker a slave a servant gets paid a slave doesn't get paid there's no free will a worker gets paid because he has free will he can quit he took the job on his own he's working from his own free will and therefore he demands a payment if you wouldn't give him payment, he wouldn't work, which is not the case of servant. A servant, whether you pay him or not, right, he's going to work for you. In fact, you don't have to pay him anything. He's your servant. If so, how can the Jewish people demand or even expect that they should receive a reward? We're God's servants. <clears throat> We're going, we don't have any free will to do this. We're God's servants. We're God's creations. We have no free will whatsoever. How can we demand that we're going to get any sort of reward? Says the Rebbe, the fact is, is that we are free agents. We're just as free as God is. The Jewish people are one with God in their essence. Because the Jewish people are one with God in their essence, so they're above the world, they're above time, they're above everything. They are free, totally free. Just like God is totally free. Therefore, that the Jewish people are serving God. True, we are servants of God. Yes, we are servants of God. But we're connected to the essence of God. From that aspect, so to speak, we can choose to be servants or not to choose, choose not to be servants. We can choose or not. If a Jew chooses not to be a servant of God, doesn't want to be a servant of God, it's not considered to be at this level of his soul. It's not considered to be a sin or going against. That's what the Jews are. They can choose what they want. So therefore, the, the fact that the Jewish people serve God, so therefore, we're doing it of our own free will, and we're not just servants. We are hired workers. Huh? We're free agents. We took the job on our own, from our own free will to serve God. So therefore, we can demand wages. Says the Rebbe, oh yeah, we can demand wages. That's pretty convincing. Okay, but in the Torah it says you have to pay a person, a worker, his wages immediately on that day. Why is God waiting with the redemption? Why is why is it well, we've been waiting for thousands of years? So the Rebbe said, no, 
The fact is, is God is paying us immediately. Every time you do a commandment, it's immediate pain. <clears throat> Two things. Number one, the reward for the commandments is put, it's reserved for us. It's like put into escrow. It's in our spiritual bank account, number one. Number two, when you do a commandment, that itself, maybe you don't, you're not aware of it. But when you do a commandment, you're actually connected to the essence of God. There's no bigger reward than that. It's like they have the story that the, 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 um, uh, 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 the king came into a town and his, all of his noblemen came back to town. All of his noblemen came to meet him and the king said, I'll give you anything you want. One said, I want a palace. One said, I want a country. One said, I want this. One said, I want the king. I want the king. Okay, so if you want the king, what does it mean you want the king? You want the king as a king. You don't want the king to stop being a king. I choose the king. King means the king is a king. He can command everybody to do what they want. Everybody has to do what they want, what the king wants. <coughs> but I chose the king. The king, so to speak, is mine. What does it mean he's mine? That the king is a king. I belong to the king. King commands me what to do. But so to speak, it's that way because I decided. I made the king my king, and therefore I must do whatever the king says. Does it make any sense? That's the fact. So as soon as you do a commandment, you're connected to the king. You, you're holding on to the king. You grab the king. And that's the biggest reward that could possibly be. Can't be any greater reward than that. And that's called Simcha Shal Mitzvah. <clears throat> we believe that when you do a commandment, it makes God happy. It makes the king happy. The king's will is done. It makes him happy. Nachat Ruach. Reach Nechuach. That, the fact that we believe we're making God happy, that should make us happy. That's called Simcha Shal Mitzvah, the joy of doing the commandment. According to this, and by the way, anybody that doesn't believe this is so, come to me one day, and I go every day to a nearby public place, and I put the fill on the people for like a half an hour. And you see what happens to people when they put on the fill in. And a lot of them are people that are non-religious, and a lot of people don't even know how to put on the fill in. I so say, you want to put on tefillin? Yes, but I don't know how. Yes, but I've never done it before. Uh, some, a big change is happening in Israel. But nevertheless, you see, put, 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 and you see that people are really happy. It's not that they have a big smile and they start dancing and singing. You see that they have a certain, how do you say, uh, uh, <clears throat> well-being. I, I think of a better word. <clears throat> when you put on, they feel that, well, I'm not doing a Jewish thing, I'm not doing a religious thing, I'm doing a real thing. I'm doing something that's real. And that's also Jewish and also religious, you can do it, that, that, that's secondary. Right, I mean, I'm doing what's real. It's doing some, this is really not God, they don't think what God is, whatever this. I'm doing something that's really real. I'm not thinking about myself, I'm not thinking about rewards. These are non-religious people. Suddenly they let all of that, all those ego <clears throat> benefits go. They're just doing something they don't understand, and it's really good. It's really real. That's what's called doing a commandment itself is a reward. The commandment itself is the reward. Oh. <coughs> okay, so now, <coughs> now we can understand what it says in the Parsha, now we can understand why there's the connection between these two Torah portions, Kitetse, we read in the morning at Shabbat, and Kitavo that we read in the afternoon. You go out to war, and you come back to the Holy Land of Israel, the work, the war, and the reward. And you read it on the same Shabbat. Why? In the condition, in the continuation of these Torah portions, is hinted at that the service of Kitetse, the Mil <coughs> when you go out to war on your enemy, that this refers to all of our deeds and everything that we've done in the world, and especially now in the time of exile, Nasid is made in a way of kitavo el orts, that when we are doing this battle in the world, and there's so many frustrating things in the world, that the electric stops and somebody cuts you off on your drive, etc., et all these things, you should know that everything that happens in the world, all the battles that you're fighting, 
you should feel in the, all the battles the certainty that there is going to be victory and the certainty that all the Jews will wake up and they'll all come to the land of Israel. Shekai, this refers to the future redemption by means of the Mashiach. That's the reward. We have to have the certainty with no doubt <clears throat> that it is going to happen, that it is happening, that it has happened, however you want to interpret it, but for sure there's going to be a time where we're going to say, that's it, it's happened. That's it, we're in redemption. All the Jewish people woke up, they're all coming back to Hainu. Shagam avodas a milchama. Even the service of the war and refining the world is in a way of menucha vityashvut. The battles that we fight are in a way that we're calm, we're settled. Not, we're not shaken up. Kevin Shabazamana Avoda, since the time that we're doing the work, Nikar, we're fighting the battle, is Nikar by Israel. It's noticed in the Jewish people and by means of them in the whole world. Bria, a situation that it was before the world was created. And that it was Kitetse, Umamad Matsav Atilavo. Before God made the world, he made a world. And that had to be fixed up. <clears throat> That's how the world has been for the last 5,780 and a few weeks. It's going to be 85 years. <clears throat> but at the same time, we should look at it, how it's going to be in the end. The man was put in to fix up the world, and for sure we will succeed. Look, and therefore, this service of war is a, a awareness that in the fact of the matter is, and there really is nothing op opposing us. Because we are on our enemies, above the enemy. The whole reason we're fighting the battle is because we are assured that in this world, God will put the whole world into our hands. The enemy will be in our hands. In other words, the world, there will be no more destructive forces in the world. The forces of destruction will become forces of construction. And those people that just can't stand this goody-goody world where everybody just like, loves each other and they're just really good for the world, so they'll die, that, which is that's what they want anyway. <clears throat> no, anyway. I mean, if you look at these all these death movements in the world, Right, I mean, the, 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 if you want to call it the, the militant part of Islam, I mean, that's Islam. And like the Nazis and these people, they were just as happy to die as to, to, to kill, right? To, to kill or to be killed. That was the SS slogan. We're going to be killed or to be get, either to kill or to get killed. We don't care. The main thing, there should be death in the world. <clears throat> that force is a bad force. So these, when it comes to be a good world with the Mashiach, makes a good world. And there's only life and 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 the, the, the family and society and progressive and the, all the potential becomes revealed and blessing is there's going to be people that are going to say life, family, blessing, eh, can't take it. Those people will get their wish. They won't be, maybe God will take them out of the world. And even more, the Shavita Shivion, when we go into war, we'll also take a prisoners and it says a prisoner. Shavita Shivio will take a prisoner. Your, who will be the prisoner? Your enemy will be your prisoner. In other words, your natural self-destructive self will transform to be your prisoner. It'll do what you want. Sharom is, it'll be your prisoner. You yourself, your own self-destructive urges will come to be controlled by you. Sharom is this hints at <clears throat> and the 288 sparks of the world of Tohu, that's the source of your enemy that fell and were broken into physical things, into this world. That by means of their service of the Jewish people and the refinement of them, there is Shavita Shavio, you will take all of the bad things in the world into your control. Shemakablim or Oros the Tohu, that the Jewish people will receive the energy from the world of Tohu, which is above the lights of Tikkun. If you see what's going on in the world now, for instance, you see that the powers of bad are really enthusiastic. They go into the streets and they yell and they scream and they burn and they do and everything. And the normal good people, 
they don't want to go in the in the streets and, and kill and right. And the people, the, the murderers, the neo Nazis or whatever, they join these guys in the streets. They join the right. And the people that are the leftists and the the the, the wokes and those people, they're also on the streets. <clears throat> And they want to kill each other, right? They say, we, uh, the, 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 the Islam, they're going to kill them. We don't care. The main thing, there should be death in the world. That's the main thing. There should be death in the world. That's good. <clears throat> you see how much enthusiasm that evil and death has. Like it's hinted, and it was like in the beginning of World War II, right? The, the enthusiasm and the, and the self-sacrifice that the Germans had was like unequaled, <clears throat> right? The best pilots and the best cannons and the best tanks and the best weapons and the, and they worked day and night and they, they, didn't, they didn't care what happened to them. And such enthusiasm for bad, right? Such enthusiasm, that enthusiasm is a good thing. What they're enthusiastic about is bad. But the fact that they're enthusiastic, that's good, right? That's good. That enthusiasm and the motivation for doing that we can use for good. The bad itself will be done away with. So that's what it means. We'll take it for a prisoner. And the rule was like it says <clears throat> in the beginning, like we just finished learning in the Kuti Torah, the, the, the hated son, the, the, the firstborn son comes from the hated wife. What does it mean? That by means of refining the hated wife, that's called our animal soul. The hated one is we draw down lights of tohu, which are before higher, the Bikurim, which are higher <clears throat> than the, the creation of the world, this tremendously high level of Tohu. <clears throat> that's even before what's called the Tzimtzum. That's even higher. That's before the world of Tohu. <clears throat> in other words, God, when he created the world, had in his mind that he wanted there to be the potential of bad in the world. That's why he created a world. God wanted to be concealed. <clears throat> if he didn't want it, he wouldn't create a world. God wanted there to be this potential for bad in the world. In order to do this, he had to make this whole process of making the world of tohu with powerful lights and then breaking the vessels and the vessels came down to lower levels of reality, and etc., etc., et cetera. But God wanted there to be bad in the world. And the reason he did it is because the son of the hated wife, that's the bad in the world, the outcome, that's really the first point. It comes from a tremendously high source and then we can reveal this in our day-to-day -day life. And there won't be any more depression in the world. People won't be depressed. They'll be enthusiastic about waking up in the morning and serving God and building just like they were enthusiastic about waking up in the morning and destroying. And this is the main thing. But the work that we have to do, the battle that we're fighting to, to, to control ourselves, this is in a way of in a way of calmness. You rush to be a shaft of in a calm way, simply. The calmness of the soul and the calmness of the body. Al Yadeh, by means of that, God should give each Jew calm mashim et saraklo, that we shouldn't have any physical or spiritual problems. And it should be in plenty, there shouldn't be any poverty. From God's <coughs> full, open, holy, wide hand. First of all, first of all, you should have what you need in order to serve God. Like Rambam writes regarding the Yudim, the goals that the Torah set for the physical world. What does the Torah say it's supposed to be done with this physical world? If Tihu Yasir Rambam writes, Maimonides, that there will be removed all of the <clears throat> things which prevent <coughs> and which <clears throat> did I say detour us from doing what we have to do, like holy or milchama. It says Mashiach is going to come and they'll remove all of the things that impede us. From serving God, like being sick, wars, hunger, disease, etc. Uh, very interesting. Maimonides writes that the Jewish people believed in God, not 
that Moses brought the Jewish people to believe in God, not because of the miracles that he did. And the, the people were hungry, so he brought bread from heaven. And the people were thirsty, so he brought water from a rock. The people had enemies, so he surrounded them with clouds. Of course, God did all these things, but he did them through Moshe, to Moses, through Moses. <clears throat> but that was not to prove God's existence. Why was it for? It's because the Jewish people, they, need, they had certain needs. And without these needs, they couldn't exist and they couldn't serve God. So therefore, we just gave them what they needed. And the Rambam writes interestingly, because it could be that a magician could have done these miracles, splitting the sea. Up to now, there hadn't been such a great magi magician as a sorcerer. And Moses had like a, he was a super duper magician, sorcerer. He could do these tricks. Why did the Jewish people believe in God? Because they heard God speak to Moses on Mount Sinai. That's the reason they believed in God. But all the miracles, they're just sort of by the way, just, just to remove and difficulties. Says the Reb, said the Rambam says that's what Mashiach is going to do also. He's going to remove all the difficulties. The Yashpi Alan will give us only good. <clears throat> and he'll which which encourage us and strengthen us, La Sota Torah to do Torah, to learn Torah. And everything we need in order to learn Torah will have. Like for instance, to be satisfied, food, peace, money, gold, silver. So we can do with it what we want to in order to serve God. In addition to this, also the Torah, Tashlum Shah, there'll be a reward that has to be given in the time of <clears throat> now. In addition to the future things that God is going to give us. But like we said before, a, a, a worker has to get paid immediately. What reward are we getting? Not just spiritual reward. <clears throat> <clears throat> or the revelation of the, the source of the spiritual, God himself. But right now we should have a physical reward. And the Duma, something like the reward that's going to be in the days of the Mashiach. What does it mean? That we shouldn't have any financial problems. We shouldn't have any family problems. <clears throat> but Oto Zaman at that time, and there won't be any hunger. There won't be any war. There'll be a lot of good. <clears throat> they'll, they'll call them madanim. All the fine things will be like dirt. They'll be. You want to have a good steak? Ah, steak, no problem. You want to have a, 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 a five thousand uh, dollar uh, suit? Five thousand dollar suit. It's a big deal. No one will be jealous of anybody else. Why do I only have a five thousand dollars? He's got a fifty thousand dollars. You want a fifty thousand dollars suit? Yeah. yeah. Okay, fifty thousand. Are you happy now? No, I'm not happy. You want to know why you're happy? Not happy because you're thinking about your suits, things like that. Nothing's going to make you happy. <clears throat> suits don't make the soul happy. <clears throat> but on the other hand, not having proper clothes can make you unhappy. So you have clothes and you get what you want. Now start using your soul. Do with your soul. Now you're free. Do with the soul with Torah, commandments, good deeds, helping others, loving others. That's what Rambam says, that all the, the, the pressure, expensive things in the world will be like dirt. Every, it'll be available to everyone. <clears throat> a little bit. <clears throat> we, can, we can attach this to what we said before. <clears throat> we can attach what we said before, I'm sorry, to the time when we're reading this. When are we reading this Parshas Ki Teitze this week and Parshas Ki Tavo Mincha? When? We're reading it, what? Because all the Torah portions that we read have a connection to the time when they are read, the month of Elul. The month of Elul is the last month of the months of the year. Shabuosim Chesh Nefesh, that we make an inventory of our soul, of all the service, the good deeds, speech, thoughts that we've had in the year, and also of the opposite. Alma and I, in order to fix up and <clears throat> to complete all of our service in Torah and, and prayer and charity by means of tshuva, as, in other words, returning to our true identity and comparing what we were, what we actually did in comparison to what we actually should have done if we knew who we were. Like it's hinted at in our Torah portion, that she will cry in this week's Torah portion. It says, if you take a, 
uh, you, you make war against your enemy, and if you see a woman there that you want to take as your wife, it says then you can take her. But she, she, you, when, when after you take her home, you can't have any relations with her. She sits at, at home and she cries for her mother and father for one month. That's what it says. And if after that one month she decides that she wants to convert and that she wants to do this, it says then you can you can uh, marry her. You can take her. So it says that she weeps her father and mother one month. That's talking about me and you also. The one month is the month of Elul. And weeping for a father and mother is <clears throat> regretting the bad things that we did, did for this month. Our father is, uh, and our mother, of course, is God. The Ali Day by means of this, you come to a complete redemption. Like it's hinted at what it says in our Torah portion, that afterwards, Tavo Ubalta. Afterwards, you can, if she decides she wants to convert, etc., but after that month, you can you can have relations with her, you can marry her, and she can be your wife. It says, on that day, God and the Jewish people, and they get married. And that day, it says, the Jewish people will call God my husband. Like the rabbis say, the Mota Mashiach, the days of the Mashiach, that's the actual marriage between the Jewish people and God. Like it says, like it says, because your husband is the one that really makes you. So the month of Elul, this is a preparation <coughs> for, so the, the, the month of Elul is a, 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 a reckoning from the, what happened the past year, preparing ourselves for the wedding, and also preparing ourselves for what's going to be the next year. Not just making inventory of the past year, preparation for the next year. According to this, we can say that in the month of Elul is stressed, stressed, the joining of two things of working and getting paid. In the beginning of the service of the month, the new year, this is after completing the previous year. <clears throat> Therefore, we get reward for the previous year. This is also hinted at the name El. So we're preparing for the work of the next year, but we're receiving the reward from the previous year. That's the initials of the word Elul. Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed. We've said this so many times. It's a sentence in the Song of Songs. I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me. Shebet Tehillah Savot, at the beginning of the service, of we, begins with us. Eturuta dilatata, ani ladori. We, I am to my beloved. And afterwards, my beloved comes to me. God reacts. This is stressed. The tachlis ashlemos, the ultimate completion of the reward. What's the reward? Dodi li, the God comes to me. And but the unification of both of them, ani le dodi, dodi li, Jewish people serving God and God reacting to the Jewish people. It's all put into one word. It's Elo. That's marriage. Marriage. It says the man gets married to his wife. Ahiul basar achad to become one flesh. The Jewish people and God become totally one. Kamud gash basim, like it is at the end of the 40 days that are hinted at by the four yuds in the sentence. Ani, the dodi, the dodi li. How does each word end with a yud? Ani, that's a yud. The dodi, another yud. Yud is the numerical value of 10. 10, 20. There's another yud. 30, 40, that's the 40 days that Moses was on Mount Sinai. When did it start? On Rosh Chodesh Elul, the first day of Elul. Moses went up to the, for the third time on Mount Sinai, and he received the Torah 40 days later. He came down on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, Yom Chatunota, that's the day of God's marriage. <clears throat> they were given the second tablets to Moses. Ad l'shlemos and esuim, to the ultimate completion and the consummation of the wedding in the days of the Mashiach, when the Jewish people will really be unified with God. And to explain, that this marriage, being married, is called Nisuin. It's called Kedushin. There's different names for it. Really, these different names, there are different stages of getting married. But Nisuin is from the language of Nasa, to elevate. Nesir Rosh. Nisuin means to be elevated. This will be completed in the Mashiach. 
Like it says, Yorum Menisa Vagov Mo'od. It says the Mashiach will be elevated and Nisa high. Hi, Nasi, uh, the, the, the leader of a generation is called the Nasi of the generation. Nasi. The Al Yodo, by means of the Mashiach, that he's going to be a Nasi, he'll be elevated. That's also the idea of, of a marriage, Nisuin. He married. There'll be the complete elevation of the head, Kinot Nasoed Rosh, the elevation, Kitisaed Rosh, the elevation of every Jew. And especially by means of the spark of Mashiach, which is in every Jew. This is the level of Yechida. That's what we call the fifth level of the soul that is totally united with the essence of God. That's united with the essence of God. <clears throat> and just again to remind everybody that the essence of God, <coughs> the essence of God is not something that's removed from the world. The essence of God is the essence of reality. It's the, it's the source from which all reality comes. So that's why it's called the Yechido Shel Olam. It's the uni unity of God in the world. This is stressed, <clears throat> like we said before, the month of Elul in the year Tavshin Nun Aleph. Then it was, this year is Tavshin, going to be Tavshin Pei He. So it's not really so relevant what the Rebbe is saying over here to us, but we can see what he said. The Tashin Nun Aleph means to Nasei, means to be elevated. And the elevation of the Jewish people and God in the days of the Mashiach. I mean, that this was, this was already after the amazing miracles that only the Lubavitcher Rebbe predicted were going to happen, that Russia fell and that Saddam Hussein shot these massive missiles into Israel that destroyed, you know, huge buildings and that nobody was hurt. That's what the Rebbe said. Israel is the safest place in the world for Jews. <coughs> The language of Yalkut, in the language of one of the Midrashim, the year that the Melech HaMashiach will be revealed, he'll stand on the roof, on the, the, the top of the Holy Temple, and he'll say, Anavim, humble ones, Jewish people, the time of your redemption has arrived. Now the Rebbe said that 770 is the Holy Temple. There's what's called Beit Rabbeinu Shababavel. Right? It's mentioned, what is it in the Gomorrah and Tainit? I forgot. And Megillah, I think. Megillah. It says that there's a place called the, the Holy Temple in exile. <clears throat> it's, it gives a whole explanation. It's, it's in the Gomorrah. It's not a thing that we made up. There's a Holy Temple outside of Israel. And that Holy Temple is going to fly to Israel. With all, so the Rebbe said that the Mashiach is standing on the roof of the Holy Temple. And he's announcing, humble ones, Jewish people, the time of redemption is revealed. Since we're found in the last month of the year, and the year that was this month, Tavshinun Aleph, it's impossible to push away this promise of God that God is going to elevate us. He's going to take us. It should be immediately. Now, any normal person can say, okay, that year passed, and that's it. But any not normal person, which that's every Jew, we're not normal people. <clears throat> we do these weird commandments and we don't turn on lights on Shabbat. Why? Because God said, and people are willing to give their lives for this, right? And the whole world hates us for absolutely no reason, right? So we're not normal people. So not normal person will say that if the Rebbe Lubavitch promised that the redemption is going to come in 1991 and it didn't come, for sure it's going to come now. For sure it's going to come now. There must just be, maybe got a flat tire or something happened, you know. <clears throat> he got delayed for some whatever reason it is. For sure, it's going to happen now. Any instant, so automatically, the kabbalim take from yad. We can then we we will receive the reward of the days of the Mashiach and the raising of the dead, and all those people that were killed on October the seventh will all raise up in the dead. Right? They were all killed only because they're Jews. They have the highest place in heaven, and hopefully, they won't stay in heaven very long. And all the souls will come back to earth. <clears throat> the ad until the schar and how much more so the soldiers that are protecting us, they're protecting us and from our enemies. And one of our biggest enemies is the government, the Israeli government is perhaps our biggest enemy. <clears throat> right? What happened on October 7th? No, who knows? But nevertheless, it's all going to come together. It'll be amazing miracles. The days of the Mashiach, there'll be peace in the world and the raising of the dead. Even the dead people will, dead Jews will come back to life. And also the non Jews that, that did what God wanted them to until the reward of what's called the 7,000th year, 
That's the reward for the tzitzikim in the future, <clears throat> but it'll be now. And this day, and especially at the end of it, Parshas in Mincha that we're going to say on the Shabbat, in this moment, that all the Jewish people will come to their senses, the Holy Temple will come to Israel, it'll be all in all the news, even CNN will not be able to deny it, and the Jewish people will wake up, the whole world will say, if we hated the Jews, we were wrong, if we liked the Jews, we were right, we have no idea how right we were, and all the Jews will wake up, and they'll all come to the land of Israel. It's going to happen. Will it happen? It says not only will it happen, it's late. It's supposed to happen any second. And that's what we're all waiting, and that's what certainly is going to be. God willing, tomorrow we'll finish this. We'll finish this. Let us go now to...